these tactics are the ones the pros are using at the World Cup playoffs. And today, I'm going to show you exactly what they are. We're going to be talking about the 4-3-2-1 and the 3-5-2. Let's start with the 4-3-2-1, where the main aim is quick passes around the box and quick snappy movements, and obviously the overload in midfield, which will get you a lot of goals. So let's get into the tactics straight away and show you what we're working with. Defensive style, balanced. We all use balanced at the pro level. You'll do very, very well to find anyone using press after possession loss. But if you're a presser, feel free to do that. Width is 42 in defense, keeping it fairly narrow. The depth is at 72. So it is a high line. It is a high depth. But trust me, it will be worth it. Moving to the attack, we have the build-up play on balance and the chance creation is where we start something. We are going to be on to the direct passing. If you're not using the direct passing, use it now. It is very, very effective this year. It's been effective since October and it will continue to be so, the way the game is set up. So on to width. We actually keep this pretty short. You can see the number bar going up ever so slightly, but we only put it to 33. And the players in box, we only put it to four as well. So on paper, that looks negative. You're going to think, wow, what is going on here? We're pretty defensive. A, a very narrow attack and only four in the box. But trust me, instructions is where it changes. On the instructions, the goalkeeper and centre-back, absolutely nothing. Keep them exactly how they are. The right-back, who is normally your more defensive fullback, is on stay-back whilst attacking. The left-back is where we've seen a brand new instruction this year that we have never really seen before, and it is balanced attack overlap. Now, there is great reason to do this. The reason being, when a fullback is on balance, they will overlap a lot of the time. And obviously, with the overlapping instruction, they're going to overlap the rest of the team. So what does this do? I hear you ask. What it does is create an imbalance in attack where you have one extra man because the winger will not track the fullback. The way that AI works, if a winger is marking the fullback, they will not go back with them. So when Robertson goes higher up the pitch, you're going to have a massive overload on one side. Now... The reason this is so effective in the 4-3-2-1 is because you have the three strikers to work the passes across the box with centre midfielders coming forward as well. So really, it is an attacking overload and that is helped by the midfield three instructions. We have Alfonso Davis, my right centre mid, on balanced and cover wing. What I recommend here is an attacker who can finesse because they're going to arrive on the edge of the box a lot. Now, if they've got a finesse shot, it means you can either pass it forward or you can crack a finesse from any angle. So I would say a left-footed player here, preferably someone with good finesse shots, would work very, very well. Your middle centre midfielder is going to be your destroyer, your DM, your tackler, whatever you want to call it. And he will be on stay back whilst tacking cover centre. His only job is to cover the centre of the pitch. Basically, just move it on to the good players. And then the left centre midfielder is going to be on balanced cover centre. Now, for me, I like this to be a right footer as well, so you can finesse it with here. It's also worth bearing in mind that this team is not quite fit for it. I just use this for a weekend league shapeshifters episode. And up front, we move to the right forward, which is Jack Grealish here. He's on stay central and mixed attack. Now, the stay central is to basically mean that when Robertson crashes on, we have three players in very, very attackive central positions going forward. So on the left forward, Silas, we have the same thing, but there is something worth noting here. Silas is on comeback on defense. The reason for this is if you put your left forward on comeback on defense, it will defend in a 4-4-2. It is pivotal you have this on comeback defense and also the right center mid to be on the same thing he's on here. The right center mid being on cover wing and the left center mid being on cover center means the right center mid will go to a right mid in 4-4-2. These two will play as your two center mids and then your left forward will fill in as your left midfield. So you now end up with a 4-4-2 in defense. This is why the 4-3-2-1 is so effective because of the way it defends in that 4-4-2, you get the balance of both. And then up front, it is a stay central, get in behind. He is going to pin the defense back as much as possible. Basically, this is your saucy striker, your R9, your Eusebio, your Son, maybe even a Johan Cruyff. Basically, someone that isn't that good in the air because you want your tall players to be at right forward and left forward for any potential crosses. So if you use a CR7, 
using right forward because you're going to have the overlapping left back. So to summarize the 4-3-2-1, it attacks very well with the left back overlapping. And then if you apply these instructions, you'll end up with a 4-4-2 in defense. It's what we call the best of both worlds. The other formation that the pros will be using is the 3-5-2. This has been a staple of FIFA 22. So let me show you real quick. It is balanced, 46 width, 62 depth balanced direct passing this time with 54 width six players in the box two corners and two free kicks the aim of the 352 is similar it is to get an overload in attack and to get as many bodies forward so let's look at the instructions where the goalkeeper nothing defenders nothing the center mids are on balanced defense stay back whilst attacking and cover wing this is applicable to both of them they're basically going to stay in the middle because the, all the attacks are going to come from the front five now the front five the wing backs are like these to be attacking players players that are good on the ball because they are your only winger outlet so they are on comeback on defense and get in the box for cross again overload is the key word of today these formations will give you massive massive overloads in attack which is why he's on getting the box across to arrive at the back post it is the exact same for the left back as well come back on defense get into the box for cross going on to the cam we have him on stay forward the reason for stay forward is to create counter attacks he's going to hang up there with the two strikers and basically when you get the ball you're going to be three on two against their center backs every single time we look at the strikers and we change nothing on these the reason i change nothing is because i want them to be open for the extra pass we've noticed that throughout the year that if you change the instructions on your players sometimes they are not free for the extra pass these are the two formations the pros will be using at the World Cup playoffs. Unfortunately, I won't be playing myself as I didn't qualify this year. But trust me, these tactics will do you a load of good. Let me know in the comments how you get on with these. It'll be the last tactics video of the year. I hope you've all enjoyed it and I'll see you all very, very soon.